Welcome to the Higher Self Podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you unravel anything keeping you from a life of true abundance, joy, and happiness, which is your birthright. Each week, we'll bring in different guests specifically tailored to help you on your journey to discovering your higher self, whether it's spirituality, business, finances, health, or relationships, there are no topics that are off limits. So get ready and enjoy this week's episode of The Higher Self. Welcome to another episode of The Higher Self. I feel this awesome energy with this guest. So I'm going to get right into it. Alexi Panel, say hello. Hi, so great to be here be with you. Yeah, yes. this is cool. This is cool. By the way, I don't even know what we're going to talk about yet. Which is the best. Which is the best because we're going to flow. Yeah. And it's going to be authentic and real and raw. And that's always the best. Absolutely. And I just got the sense to start with, we both moved from California here to Austin, Texas. God bless you if you live wherever you live. (laughs) But one of the things that I mentioned to you is that energy and location is a very real thing. Yeah. It's undeniable when you get here to Austin, for those of you coming to Awaken, you can genuinely feel it at the airport. It just feels different, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to just get your take on not only energy and location, but the energy of the people you surround yourself with, the energy of food, the Mm -hmm. energy of who you are as a human being. When I mention energy, what comes up? Energy for me, it's the context of the universe saying yes. Right. So for me, it's am I in alignment with my yes, with a greater yes around me? Um, without that sounding too woo woo, because it can. I'm <laughs> yeah. a very earthy, grounded person. What that can mean is realistically. So I'm in Austin. I moved here because there were certain things for my family, certain things I valued, certain um, life experiences I wanted to have. And so I set my life up for the the environment to be conducive to what's already happening. Mm-hmm. And I believe that everything is infinitely happening. So whatever you're a yes to, it can happen, but the environment has to be set up to be conducive for that, right? That's right. So we're in LA. I've got a family. I'm pregnant with twins at the time. We're starting to look for houses to buy investment properties. And it's like, oh, something's not feeling right. I just want something more grounded. I want something more earthy. I want... um just different values, right? And LA is great. Love LA, but I grew up in a small town. So I love me some like good old fashioned small town values, especially when it comes to family. I've got four little kids. So Austin just had this feeling of, it was like an emergence of spiritual energy, an emergence of authentic, like people living their life and actually being true to where they're at and not trying to position or prop or prove themselves in a way. For sure. And I don't know, there's just something for where I'm presently at two years ago when I moved here, my husband, our family, that was like, we need this. This is going to open up an emergence of what is begging to come through, but the conditions aren't right in LA for. Wow. So that energetically is what we do with our food. It's what we do with what we consume. It's what we do with our people in our lives. Um, I mean, everything from podcasts I listen to, to books I read, to how I wake up and spend my first hour, all of that is conducive to the energy that wants to emerge through. It's, you know what, and this is, uh, and I want to, I don't want to go into this here because number one, I remember being a place in my life Mm -hmm. where I didn't know that there was such a thing as this doesn't feel right. Right. I just did what I did. Right. You know, I was in relationships that I was just supposed to be in. I right. had friends that, well, these are just my friends. I've had I, them forever. <laughs> I've had them forever. So this is just the way it is. So right. it's like, it it didn't allow room for any sort of growth or any sort of transformation inside of me. Yeah. And as a result, you know, I feel like so many people when they reach out and they say, how do I change my life? Mm-hmm. You know, I think it starts by you just being awakened to the fact that your answers are within you. So when you were looking for a home, there was something that wasn't feeling right that caused you to say, where else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what what else is up there, right? Yes. One of the myths that people buy into is life is exactly the way it is and there's nothing I can do about it because this is just the way it is. Oh, that's a hard one to buy. It is, right? (laughs) That's a hard one to live by. Absolutely. Oh, man, yeah. And I know it well. I did it for a long time, so I get it. For sure. And this is what causes people to stay stuck, right? Yeah. And yet what you said is we were looking for a home and something didn't feel right. And so my 
my question for you is how do people, and I'm going to say this, and, and women, because that is a woman's truest power, superpower sure. is your intuition. Yeah. How do you tap more into your intuition? Well, first, you, you got to exit the premises up here. You know, I know for me, being a woman in a very male-dominated world, I was very much in my head, very much success-driven, goals, priorities, productivity, usefulness, very much in the masculine mind. And I still am. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've also activated a deep connection to my body, which I think most women especially, but also men, are very disconnected from their bodies, right? We're, we're on screens all day. We're listening to things, watching things, constantly talking, ding, 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 ding on our phone. We're never taking the time to go, <sighs> center point, body, how am I feeling? What's going on? What's, what's happening, right? right? So for me, being in touch with my body is what had me connect to those conversations of like, oh, this doesn't feel good in this friendship. What else is possible? Oh, this doesn't feel good in this relationship. Maybe I'm not speaking my needs. Having those types of conversations that force us to get radically honest with ourselves and where we're at, start with getting radically honest with what's going on inside or what's lacking from in here. And in order to do that, we have to be connected. In order to do that, we have to be less distracted. So it's, you know, it's all the things. Absolutely. But most of us are too distracted, I would say. So, so I'm, I'm going to chime in on that one. It, it's, it's so interesting that you use that word distracted because I remember when I moved here, mm -hmm. um, this is where the TV was supposed to go. Mm. And there, as a matter of fact, behind this painting, there's actual there's wire. The, the, the wires and all <laughs> yeah. that stuff. And I, and, I, and I came in and I thought, you know what? This is a season for me to not own a TV. Right. This is a season for me to just like be with me, you know, that was a large distraction for me. And then you're going to get a kick out of this because the universe always tries to test us, right? <laughs> well, oh, we yeah. always try to test ourselves. Yeah. Basically. Our future <laughs> self tries to always test our yeah. ourselves, right? So right after I made the decision, someone walked in and goes, you're not going to have a TV there? Mm. Like with the face and everything, right? <laughs> like, yeah. And I was like, uh, 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 <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. Well, what happens when the kids come over? Well, what happens when, you know, they get bored? What happens? Well, you know, we'll find a way. Yeah. And, and, and we get so easily distracted, right? What do you think one of our listeners who might be listening right now that were that resonated with them could do to get undistracted or to become aware that they are distracted? Mm. Well, to become aware that you're distracted, and this is going to take it a cut deeper, but I think we could go there. Yeah. Okay, how do I want to frame this? A lot of people, most people, self-included, and this is the work I'm up to right now, we outsource our power to something outside of ourselves, right? So this is a form of distraction. Oh, my partner, my marriage, my husband, my wife, if they don't love me this way, then I don't feel fill in the blank. Oh, my job, if it's not being successful or hitting these numbers, or if I have this amount of clients, then I'm not worthy, or then I'm good enough once I hit it. All of that is a form of distraction as well. And what it's distracting us from is our ultimate divine self, source, Yeah. right? We are the infinite source of everything, unlimited supply, right? But the more we keep outsourcing our power to something outside of ourselves, the more we're stuck, the more we're handing the keys out and saying, here, you take those. I've built a prison for myself and you tell me when I can step out, right? And so... Work can be a distraction. Relationship can be a distraction. Family can be a distraction. Anything can be a distraction if you are outsourcing your power to something outside of yourself. Yeah. So that's like the deeper cut, right? But if we want to talk just like TV and phones and all that, cut it out. Like what you said, put like do a detox 30 days, 60 days. For me, I did it. I used to be one of those people that was like 24 hours. You'll get a response from me via text, email, whatever. Now it could be months, it could be never, because that is not something I prioritize anymore. And that took time for me to get to. So true. But it started with a detox. And what I realized was, I was like, man, I put so much value on being dependable and being somebody that, like response time. So and, true. You know, like so I'm a Virgo, so I'm like, my response time is always great. And I said, man, that's, that's me handing my, my keys, going here, you tell me when and I'll respond. Yeah. Instead of what do I actually value? Oh, I, well, I value presence in life. Well, what would allow me to be more present and engage with my real life? Oh, not my phone. 
Right. So my phone's always on silent. All my apps, social apps are gone. Don't have them on my phone. I don't even know my logins. I maybe log in here and there to do stuff. Um, text messages, I'll respond when I respond, if I respond, email, same. Beautiful. And, you know, a lot of people don't like that, but it's not their life. It's mine. And my children will know their mother, not their mother looking down at her phone. Wow. You know, so that's something that it's radical in today's world. I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> pray <laughs> hallelujah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's like, so true. I think about, you know, I actually heard um, Danielle Laporte was, did a podcast years ago. I was pregnant with my first child, who's now four, almost five. And it said it was uh, basically the idea was about you only have a certain amount of time with your kids when they're this young. Mm. Like, don't outsource that. Like, be there for it because it goes so fast. And I, I took that on. I listened to it. And that's what made me consider, like, do I, do I want to be as on my phone as I am right now, as on technology, as on social media? And the answer was no. And so I just trusted that. And I had a lot of people, a lot of people's scarcity come to me and say, well, aren't you worried? You've got all this momentum. Like, aren't you scared that you're going to lose it? It's like- On the contrary. No, exactly. Because you step into your power. Exactly. And like, mm -hmm. what momentum am I losing? I'm actually gaining more of myself. I'm taking my power back. I'm more potent, more powerful because I'm present to life, the magic of life, the mysteries of life, the little tiny moments that when I do teach, my teaching is that much more potent. Absolutely. Because I'm not diluting my energy everywhere. So, so distractions, find out where your energy is just being leaked left and right and cut it off. That's up to us. But then really think about where in your life you're handing your power out. Maybe it's your bank account, your partner, your clients, your Instagram following, and take that shit back. Yeah. Take absolutely. it back. You know, it's so interesting when we talk about Instagram, I remember there was a point where like I couldn't function mm. if I didn't respond to people wow. within like 10 minutes. Wow. Because I, I want to respond. Right. It was Because that's what felt noble and true and right. correct to me. Yes. And yet, like, and now it's like, I don't, I'm done. I don't like, right. I can't, I can't <laughs> respond. Or the team responds. Right? I'm not even involved. Right. Because it just was robbing me of, of so much of my, my power. And I, I have this question for you. Mm -hmm. I, I recently came face to face with something that I didn't realize was so missing from my life. Mm. I flew out to London. I hung out with my girlfriend's family for yeah. the first time. Yeah, nice. And I noticed that they all cook together, uh, have dinner together, yeah. clean up together. And I'll be honest with you, I thought it was because like there was like a special guest. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this happens once a so year, right? right? So this is like because I'm here, right? And she's like, no, this is just the way we do things. Wow. And I'm like, no way. We never sat down as a family. We never did any of that, right? And so my question for you is this version of Alexi, mm -hmm. is she here today because she was raised to be this way? Or did something happen in her life mm -hmm. where she made a a shift? Yeah. And 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 like for many of us who awaken, yeah. was there an awakening moment for you? So many. Okay. And and also I was raised a certain way too. So it's both and, okay. right? I definitely come from like the Greek side of my family. It's very traditional. We owned a Greek restaurant. We had big family dinners, like all my cousins, my aunt and uncle, my grandparents, my great aunts, like everyone was there every day. Right. So it was like extended family meal every day. Right. Um, so family means a lot to me for sure. But I also had two parents that were entrepreneurs. So they worked all the time and a family of entrepreneurs that worked all the time. So it was always relating in the context of work. And so what promise I made myself for my kids is I wanted to be around more. I wanted to be present. I wanted to have fun. And not that my parents didn't do that, but it was few and far between, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I was raised. But awakening moments, so many. I mean, we could start at, 11, when I recognized that I thought differently than most people in my small town because I had a father who studied martial arts and Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy. And my mom, who was a psychiatrist, who thought differently about the world and people. And I was reading Tony Robbins at 11 and 12 while people were reading Catcher in, in the Rye. And it's like, I don't want to read that stuff. I want to read this stuff. You know, I did my first Tony event at 16. I did Landmark Education 18 to 21. Um, Traveled the world singing with a major music artist as an opening act from essentially 17 to 21. So I lived a very crazy life and a very different life very early. And I got a taste of what fame can do and produce, which was not always great. 
Mm-hmm. I got to see behind the veil of some of the most successful people in music at that time. And while that was an incredible opportunity for me to travel the world and discover my inner artist and try things that I never, most people in their life will never get to try. Um, it also was a big wake up call. Like I have to live in alignment with my truth and this isn't my truth. And I don't want to get stuck chasing something outside of myself, money, fame, significance, sure. because I see what it causes at a detriment. I saw people who had everything, all the wealth you could want. I mean, yachts, airplanes, all the things that were miserable and slowly suffocating themselves with everything that they achieved because they felt like they had to keep it up, but they were miserable. And so I always, because of that, I always wanted to continue to check in with myself and say, what's true for me right now? Because the ego's tricky, right? Like I've always wanted to make an impact and do things. I started a nonprofit early on when I was 20 and still have it. So I've been doing great things in the world, but the ego is tricky even in those things, right? Like, oh, I'm making an impact and doing this stuff, but but from where, mm. you know? And I had to catch myself a few times, like, oh, I'm doing this from a place of proving still. Like my 20s were largely about proving something to myself. Mm. And it wasn't the world I was trying to get approval from, it was me, you know? Like, am I worthy of this? Do I matter? Am I making a difference? And I wasn't really ready to answer those questions until about 30. And then that's a whole different journey, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And when you when you speak about, you know, or when you mention the word journey, I've got to ask you, because mm-hmm. most all of our guests here have in some way, shape, or form journeyed with plant medicine. Yes, I have. <laughs> and so, you know, we, yes, we, have. we're yeah. the weirdos of society. I know. We're the ones that are doing the evil stuff. And I'm- yet we we know that the opposite is actually true. Yeah, and for anyone that's triggered by it, like I used to be really triggered by it. Oh my God, so was I. So triggered I by it. I thought you were the devil. Yeah, I it's, was just like, I was like, yeah. oh, this is like, oh, so you're basically a druggie that says it's yeah. medicine. Like, cool. <laughs> yeah. hope, I hope you're having yeah, yeah. fun rationalizing that to yourself. Right. Like that was my judgment. Right. And the truth is like for anyone that feels like a tinge of judgment, great, that's that's a teacher for you. You know, maybe it's that you have a conversation with someone that's done it. Maybe it's you sit in ceremony yourself and do it in a light way to introduce yourself to it because it, it is truly incredible Yeah, when done with intention, right. with the right people in the right context. And it can also be horrible yeah. depending on where you do it and what context and intention you're doing it from. Yeah. So you know, it's easy to judge from a high horse, but if you really want to know, get in the game and find out. Yeah. How did it help you? <sighs> Man, <laughs> my first, so it was my 30th gift to myself for my 30th birthday. I went to Peru. Ayahuasca had been like calling me, which sounds so crazy, but everyone's like, you'll know when yeah, it's yeah. time. It's <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, right? it is true. Like, yeah. Um, and it, it was like, yes, I get to go. And my friend had been sitting in ceremony. She is a flight attendant, traveled a lot to South America and had been sitting in ceremony. And it was always a no, 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 until it was a, it's time. And so I went and I just got my ass kicked. Like, first, kicked. first time? First time. So did I. Kicked. Oh my like, God. And it's so funny because everyone I had spoken to was like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and I'm like, Everyone lied to me, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, okay, something's wrong. Something's wrong because it's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be what, a, you know, but it was in hindsight. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, know? it was. Yes. Why did it kick my ass? Because I had a massive ego death. Because you, you needed it. Oh, I my needed God. It yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I saw all the, the places in myself, in my lineage, in my work that I was hiding, that I was people pleasing, that I was uh, positioning or posturing. I saw the the parts of my heart that I was hiding and like keeping closed off. And I had to purge all of that. Yeah. And it was intense. Yeah. So intense. But what's interesting, at the end of that ceremony, the plant basically said, we're done here. Your work now is to find me without me. And so I was actually in Peru to do like a three session back to back thing. Uh, And I just did the one and I was done. Get out of here. Yeah. And so since then I have worked with other medicines, um, very lightly, but it, it, it has been my work to find that space. So I find it through movement. I find it through breath work. I find it through all these different portals, but I can find it a lot faster because I've been there. 
Like I have a touch point, right? So I'm not someone that sits in ceremony a lot. Um, and when I do, it's super light, maybe once or twice a year um, and not with ayahuasca. We're, her and I, our work is done for now. And she said, when it's time, if it's time, you'll know. Yeah. But my work truthfully is how do I activate? Because again, if I give my power to ayahuasca or plant medicine, then I'm just waiting for the next ceremony to be enlightened, right? Versus I am the source of that. Aya is, is the thing that helps activate. Activate, right. But we have that within us. Breathwork acts, activates that. Right. If you've ever had an incredible breathwork ceremony. Just as powerful. Oh yeah, my yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah. not more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Same thing with movement. So I do all these different somatic practices, breathwork practices, movement practices, so that I can learn to activate that which is already within me. Absolutely. Right? Create the conditions to activate that which is already within you and around you so that I can live more from that space of being someone who's awakened and enlightened, whatever the hell that means. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? I think that definition changes for me daily at right. this point. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and, I, and I say that because I was just sharing this with someone just about a week ago. Okay. You know, um, I, I now, well, I don't think I can say this on camera, but, but whenever I have the opportunity to help people find their way to the Got medicine, it. you know, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, Got it. I share with them the possibility. Yes. Um, but, you know, for me myself, I don't feel called to sit anymore. Interesting. And I don't feel called to sit. And that's with ayahuasca or even with mushrooms. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't feel called to sit because life has become the medicine. <sighs> that's the truth. And I'm talking like, I have medicine-like experiences yeah. in relationship, in yoga sometimes, yeah. in, in leading the retreats that I lead yeah. or the events that I lead where it's literally like, I'm having ego deaths, yes. you know, pretty continuous, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yes. And so it's really awesome to hear that because I remember, and it's so true what you say, I remember when I first sat with the medicine, and I saw people that had gone 35 or 40 times. Oh, yeah. And I thought this thought, like, that's too much. It's their journey. Sure. It's their sure, journey. Sure. But I also have come to realize that the medicine just wants to activate within you everything that's already inside of you. Yeah. You know? I love that. And I love that you're listening to that, right? Yeah. And, and the message here is, is, you know, don't not do it, but listen. listen. Again, it's listening. Like, yeah. what's true for you? Everyone's so different. And I think sounds like you're in a chapter of life that's giving you a lot of opportunities for that growth edge. For sure. And if you're already there, like, take it. Right. You know, right. some people, again, are distracting with plant medicine journeys or ceremonies because life is hard. And that's a way to kind of get out of it for a second and then come back in and feel inspired. But what changes? Right. 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 So I really resonate with that because I'm I'm kind of just coming out of, but still navigating one of the more challenging chapters of my life. And I'm getting so many opportunities to be with my ego, to be with myself in a powerful way. What was what was so challenging and what? It's just up level. Like Preston and I, so my littlest is, he just turned one. Bless you. Thank you. I'll say that again, just in yes. case. So my littlest just turned one. And, you know, four kids under four. I've been in like mom, family. You've been portal. pregnant for. Pregnant, breastfeeding, birthing. For a while. <laughs> for right. a while. Five years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been intense, right? And at the same time, running multi, multi, multi-million dollar companies. Yeah. Um, and then being a woman and having a life and all the things. But in saying that, Preston and I have been in this like cataclysmic growth, right? We've just been like, boom, business is going great. Life is going great. More kids, moving to Austin, building a house, buying investment properties, building a few more businesses. Like we've just been growing, 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 yeah, yeah, growing. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And there's a bit of survival mode in that, right? When you're head down, like, all right, we're, we're just going to get through this next launch. And then boom. Oh, now we're pregnant. Surprise. Okay. We're going to get through this. And then boom. So survival mode is a real thing you know your your nervous system is essentially in fight flight or free or freeze or fix right mm -hmm. so we recognize that oh man like we as a unit haven't really come together and like nurtured this thing in a while you guys us yeah we've nurtured the businesses we've nurtured the kids we've nurtured the investments we've nurtured our community but hey what about us right you know and so earlier this year 
him and I just, we kind of had that wake up call where it's like, hey, we should check out under the rug and anything that's been swept under there because we've been so in survival mode and so busy. Like, let's look at it. Let's clear it. Let's talk about our needs that aren't being met. Let's talk about our next chapter. Like, what do we want? You know, he's he's early 40s. I'm going to be 40 next year. And it's like, okay, how do we want to do the next chapter of life? Like, right. do we still choose this? And it's a real conversation that I think a lot of couples maybe are afraid, afraid to, have. to have. Yeah. yeah. And and we were kind of forced into it because I think the pile under the rug just got so big that we started tripping over it. <laughs> you know, it's like, we should probably, we should probably do something. About right, this. right. And so we did. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to... um just have those conversations with someone that you love, someone that you've built so much with to talk about like, hey, here's where I'm not happy. Here, hey, here's where I'm not happy. And it's like, <gasps> talk about ego death, right? Talk about like, oh shit, I'm not doing it right. Or I could be doing it better. And then there's self beat up and judgment and shame and all the things. And then there's love and hope and there's possibility gro and growth. And yeah. So it's just like equally fucking hard, challenging, crazy time where everything has to die in order for something to be built. And we're calling this chapter R2.0. You know, like 1.0 is great, but we're actually like redoing like marriage vows and just everything. Like we're re-choosing back in because we don't have to. Like Beautiful. We could co-parent really you know, well together. You know, and, 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 I, and I think that's what makes, I remember being married. Mm -hmm. And I remember being unhappily married, mm -hmm. you know, for a very long time. Yeah. And I I didn't feel like I had a choice. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I had a choice because of a couple of paradigms that I was living under at that time. One of them was the pressures of society. Right. Of course. Right. I had we had a big business. People look up to us. Right. You know, we were like the ones that had it all. We had it all figured out, right? Yeah. What are people going to think, right? Oh, we know that one. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I know that, you know one. Saying? That, that, that was one. And then the second one, which, which is just, I think a very difficult one, is religion. Yeah. You know, religion was brutal. Oof. Like, like kicked my ass for a long time because everything, I believe the, I believe, you know, love me or hate me or whatever. It's just the truth. Religion is the anti-you. Uh, it's the anti you as a human being. Mm. It's the anti you and your personal power because, again, your power is outsourced to this yeah. entity yeah. that gets to say and dictate what you do and what you don't do, how you feel and how you don't feel, and mm. what you think of the future and what you expect this life to be like. Yeah. It's really profound. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And did you grow up in it? I grew up. Oh, uh, so indoctrinated. Indoctrinated. Oh, yeah. Indoctrinated. Tough. First, it was Catholicism. Yeah. So I was an altar boy in the whole thing. Wow. And then I thought, like, I was free and I was upgraded into Christianity. Right, right. And then, you know, even that was like, you know, the religion is love. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, and you don't need a preacher. You don't need to go anywhere on Sundays. It's just, it's love. You yeah. Know? But I, I bring that up because, you know, for so many human beings out there, the matrix, the system, has them so wrapped up in this notion that they have to do something. Right. You get to choose whatever it is. You're free, people. Right. You're free to do and become and live however it is that you want to live yeah. once you accept yourself mm -hmm. as a free being. And when you are free, it's so beautiful. You get to have conscious conversations like the one you and Preston had. Yeah which it was so profoundly powerful. How powerful for a, a couple to be able to say, we don't have to do this. Yeah, and 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 that was, it was like this moment where we were like, wait, we could actually like cope it. We could still run our businesses. We could do all this like really well because we're friends. We could still be friends. We love each other. Right. But do we choose that? Right. And to choose back in when there's a lot of like cleaning up to do, it's pretty radical. Like I know for myself, I have all this shame of like, choosing back in on something? Am I just choosing back in for the kids? Am I just choosing? And I have to really sit with myself like, no, I'm choosing. I'm not even choosing in for him. I'm choosing in for the opportunity for me. Wow. And like that, it, it's been mind blowing for me, like to really sit with that. It's like, this isn't for my marriage. This isn't for my family. This is for an edge for me. It's my medicine, right? I came here in this life to really experience what it means to receive and give love. And I, I don't feel like I've maxed out on that yet. Beautiful. And wow. I'll be honest, like there's so many barriers still to my heart and I've done so much work and I live this stuff and I teach this stuff and I still find places where I'm hiding out or I'm afraid or I'm closing when I could be opening. And I'm like, that's my opportunity here is, and I know Preston feels the same and that's what, I just got it too. 
I, I that, totally felt that. I totally felt <laughs> that's that. what we've been talking about. It's like, do we do we say yes to this opportunity? Because him and I, like, we're so amazing together, and we also trigger the shit out of each other, you know, <laughs> because we're we're so opposite, but we're like the perfect right. triggers, right? Right. And so there's just so much opportunity for us to heal what our parents couldn't heal and their parents couldn't heal. And we've got four beautiful kids. It's like, let's heal the shit for them. And let's also heal it for us to be able to live. Like this was our first tattoo, Infinite Love, that yeah. P and I both got. And it was a download in my brain of like, ah, oh, this is it. This is why we're here together. Yeah. And it's landing for me now in so many more ways than I ever thought. Because I'm like, what does it actually mean to be infinite, infinite love. in my love? Yeah. In my giving and my receiving. It's like mind blowing. Everyone's like, our good news and bad news. The good news is awaken is sold out. The bad news is if you didn't get your ticket. Uh, my heart is broken that you're not coming. But listen, I've got more good news. I want you to go right now to dannymorell.com backslash awaken and sign up to be notified because we are about to release the dates for the next awaken. And I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to be a part of this list. I'm going to give you guys like a one-time offer the very first weekend that we announce it that you have to take advantage of and it's going to sell out again based off of all the messages we're go we're getting right now so go to dannymorell.com backslash awaken and if you're coming i'll see you there if not i'll see you at the next one you know it's so incredible um i'm in a new relationship right now and um and she caught something and you know in many ways she's my medicine mm. you know as i am for her of as course well. you know, yeah. i've seen her i've seen her go from like high masculine defense mechanism like my heart is not available to anyone to just like just just <laughs> okay like, You're okay baby whatever you want. but it's it, but it's beautiful because she knows she's safe with me yeah you know? yeah that's awesome you know and it's in little things that you know she's doing the same for me yeah like sometimes you know she will like rub my back mm. you know and i'll start falling asleep and feel peace and then wake up and go wait a minute why are you still doing this ah uh. It's a trip. Right, right, so right. Of course, she, of course she's doing it. She's doing it because she loves you. Not because there's an exchange. Exactly. Right, you get that? Right. 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 But when you. you're when not when you're not used to being loved in that way, that's your ego and that's an ego death. Yeah. You know, for, for those of you who are listening who have ever thought, what is an ego death? Yeah. An ego death is this protection mechanism that you've been holding on to for so long that slowly gets the chance to just go, yeah. And it's just one level closer to your heart. Right? Man, yeah. We just hopped out of the shower one day. Yeah. We hopped out of the shower and she grabbed the towel and she like put it over me. And even thinking about me gets me like uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's like, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's just the ability to receive that kind of love and that kind of care. Yeah. And I had to just let myself be in that moment. It's, it's beautiful. I love that you're sharing that because what I'm hearing is the, the initial resistance of like, can I trust this? What is this? What's the ulterior motive? Like, what does this mean? Like, now do I have to give something back? It's all the stories. Right? All of it. Versus, can I just be present to the love? And that is, that's so human. Like I, there's so many moments in myself where I see myself doing that, where it's like, there's this like moment of intimacy and then the ego's like, <gasps> too close. That's right. Do something. That's right. This is that's uncomfortable. Right. That's right. Right. And it shows up for us all differently, but what a beautiful thing to just witness it and catch yourself and choose love in the moment. Like that's, that's my work right now. It's like, oh, I'm doing the thing. Okay. What do I choose instead? What am I committed to? Right. Right. Yeah. And so for, for people who have a hard time with this, you know, um, I talk all the time about our ego and our defense mechanisms, right? Were created based off of pain or wounding or trauma or whatever that happened in our past, yeah. including stuff that is generational. Oh, yeah. Big right? Time. You know, for someone who's out there and says, you know, I get this all the time. How do I start? Mm. Like, where do I begin? Like... I can only imagine myself six years ago hearing us speak, <laughs> being like, how are these fucking people able to process all of this? It sounds I'm, crazy. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Like, you know, I'm, I'm just, yes. being, honest. I'm just yes. being honest, right? Yeah. Like, for someone who has yet to really open themselves up to, 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 to life's beautiful journey that says, all right, this, this is magical. Like, the fact that you guys are even able to talk like this. Yeah. Where do they begin? Well, the biggest thing is you want to look at places where you're resentful, 
Like that's the, the, the big one for me. That's where we're handing our power away to something else. If you're resenting someone or something or the government or your boss or society or inflation or your partner, whatever it is, look at the areas where you're holding resentment at or to something else. That is an area where you are deferring your power out. Mm. That is an area where you can go, okay, what is it that I'm looking for that I'm not getting? And then how can I give that to myself? Like it's such a simple thing, but I find even people who have been in the work for 20 plus years, myself included, that's the thing I'm still working on. When I feel myself going, oh, I wish that this person would X, Y, and Z. Okay, what do you actually need? I need certainty. Okay, how can I provide certainty to myself? I can take a deep breath. I can feel my feet on the ground. I can feel the sun on my face. I'm certain I'm alive in this moment. Okay. Just that trains my nervous system to go, you're safe. Right. The more your nervous system feels safe, the less it goes into hypervigilance around your life where it's like, go, 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 go. I have to prove. I have to get safety. Or it checks out and goes, this is too much. And we go into a depressive state, right? So nervous system safety is really like, it sounds so complex because it is, it's science, it's your whole like electrical wiring, but it's actually so simple. If you can provide yourself with safety and certainty and love and worthiness here, then you stop doing it out here and looking for money to make you feel that, your partner to make that, make you feel that, the world, X, Y, and Z. So that's something that's huge. Second thing, get in a community, get in a community, get in a community, get in a community. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because you can read all the books, listen to all the podcasts, you can know all the things, but if you're not living in a different way, it doesn't mean anything right? It's just what I call mental masturbation. You're just like, oh my God, this is so great. I'm so inspired. Ah, right. But if your life's not changing, what's the point? Yeah. You're, you're, you're just, you know, doing it to please your brain, which That's is great. Right. But for me in community is where my, cause I'm a researcher, I'm an investigator. Like that's a part of my, my, my blueprint. So I went deep in, I read all the books and did all the things and but it was still a way for me to hide. The more I knew, the more I knew that I didn't have work to do because I knew a lot, right? Versus when I got into community and relationship, intimate relationship, all my stuff started coming up. I couldn't hide anymore. I hired mentors to call me on my bullshit and to like hold a mirror up and say, hey, I'm gonna call you forward here because you're saying all the right things, but you're not an embodiment of it. And it was like, <gasps> talk about ego death. <laughs> it's like, <gasps> what do you mean? I'm not doing it perfectly. But truthfully, community is where I leveled up because it forced me to get honest about what was actually showing up, not the idea of myself that I thought was showing up because I had a feedback loop. And that feedback loop is, it's the way, it's the hard way, it sucks sometimes, but it's the only way because we can't really see ourselves objectively. Yeah. And that has created more humility, more humility creates more space for learning, more space for embodiment, um, just more space for growth. Beautiful, I love it. And specifically to the women listening, mm -hmm. you know, you're someone who, you're a business owner, you're a mother, you're a wife, you're on your own personal journey. Yeah. How, if you could give advice to, you know, the woman who is trying to find that balance between her masculine and her feminine. Yeah. Because it's something that I cover a lot. Not intentionally, but yeah. it just it just comes up, mm -hmm. you know, that reharmonization, that yeah. realignment. Um and and I love when I'm sitting with women like you who are doing it all. Yeah. What message would you have for our female listeners who say, you know, I, I want to have a business, but I want to be a wonderful wife, but I want to be a wonderful woman. Like I want to, I want to be it all. Yeah. Well, there's so many ways that I could answer this. I'll start with something that um, I think I learned about it in The Big Leap. I think it was that book, Glass Balls and Rubber Balls, right? So we can juggle, but there's certain balls that are rubber that will bounce if you let it go. But there's certain balls that are glass. And if you let those go, you're going to lose them. Yeah. So you have to know what's glass and what's rubber. For me, glass, family, partnership, although I let my partnership be glass and thinking it was rubber and it's like, oh, I got it. We're good. We're good. We're good. And we realized, oh, actually that shattered a long time ago and now we've got to piece it back together. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, oh, screw it. Let's just get a whole new one. That's why we're calling it 2.0. Right. So glass balls, rubber balls. You can have it all, but not all at the same time. Right. So you have to know what to prioritize and when. Very important. Second piece, balancing the masculine and feminine. This is interesting because I think there's a lot of damage that women do to themselves 
as it relates to society as well, like kind of say, oh, I'm too masculine or I'm too this or I'm too that. And we're punishing ourselves. We're just punishing ourselves for not being there yet or fixed or perfect balance or whatever the case may be. The truth is we're all being masculine and feminine all the time. Mm -hmm. You just have to focus on it, mm -hmm. right? So find the places where you are feminine. Find the places where you are in your creative mind, your creative expression, your movement, your body, your uh, receivership. Find those places and celebrate them. Spend time on them. Focus on them. Amplify them more. And then the places where you're a little more structured and masculine and, and the way your brain works is a, a little more kind of pragmatic, maybe you can pull back on that or outsource that to somebody else. But the truth is, when we're hyper masculine, it's usually because our feminine doesn't feel safe. That's right. Right. So again, this goes back to nervous system. So if you really want to find that like unilateral place where everything can exist in harmony, it's a safety within yourself that you have to start cultivating. And I used to say, well, my feminine doesn't feel safe in this relationship or my feminine doesn't feel safe in this business partnership. And it was still me being a victim and blaming. Right? So powerful what you just said. It's crazy. And again, like the ego's tricky. It keeps me going, oh, still my power's out there. So the minute you change or the minute this structure changes or the minute the patriarch or patriarchy changes, then I'll feel safe. And is it true that all that could change and it could affect things? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But why am I waiting for that to change when I am the source of everything? I could change within myself and feel sovereign in my being, safe in my being, totally in control in my being, no matter what I'm facing. I could be standing across from the most punishing presence in the world. But if I'm taking care of myself, I don't need this person to take care of me. That's right. And so that's been a huge wake up call for my feminine is I was the one betraying my feminine the whole time. Mm. Me. Because I was waiting for them to fix it so that my feminine could feel safe. Meanwhile, that's my job. Mm. And so that's my invitation for most women is we are deferring our sense of safety to something outside of ourselves, be it our partners, be it our money, be it whatever. It is our turn now. If we truly want full empowerment, we've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to tell ourselves you are worthy. You are so worthy of being held. You are so worthy of being loved. And I am going to give that to you relentlessly until you believe it. I love Me. it. I love it. I yeah? Love it. Yeah. It's huge. So powerful. You just said so much truth in that little five minutes, you know, and it's I go like this with my hands because it's... So often, the truth is so simple, so simple. and so, so profoundly <laughs> powerful, yeah. yet so hard to accept. Yeah. Because we'd rather it be somebody else's fault, somebody else's responsibility, somebody else's doing. Yeah, fix it for me. Fix it, absolutely. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that the only one that can fix it is you. Yeah, and it's it's hard. It's hard to hear that, like... Especially, and I'm a woman who has been a victim to certain sexual crimes, and I, I, I have a, I have been a victim. It's real. It's real. I'm not discounting that. You know, I think there's yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah, yeah. and personal development. There's like you're never a victim. No, you right. can be a victim in physical circumstances. Yeah. But whether or not you choose to be a victim in your mind is your choice, and that's that was a hard thing for me to get. You know, that's still like a recent thing that I'm getting. It's like, oh, it's it's me. It's just it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me. And it's all an opportunity for me. Yeah. Life is going to keep disappointing you until you take your power back from life and say, okay, I got me. And then life can't disappoint you because you got, got you. you. That's right. And that's it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's hard. And it's hard, man. It's hard because we live in a society that is set up to celebrate. Oh, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's set up to remind you and use and trigger that that victim in you, of by course. the way. I mean, even marketing, right? Like we look at like the makeup and beauty industry. Oh, sure. It needs you to believe you're not enough. Absolutely. It needs you to believe that you need to get this injection and that procedure and X, Y, and Z and right. this outfit. And you got to look like a Kardashian in order to be worthy. It's like, well, says who? Says who, <laughs> right. Absolutely. If you say so, then yes. Absolutely. Then you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So I'm gonna, I want to end with this, but this is going to be powerful. Okay. And it's, it's going to feel like we're not ending because this love is going to open up a whole other can of worms here. <laughs> you know, so um, one of my mentors taught me that there's three energies of human mastery. Mm. And if you can master these three, like you are, you're in bliss. Mm. The first one is money. The second one is food. 
And the third one is sex. Ah. Right? Your your most intimate relationships with your partner. Facts. It it shows you so much about you. Facts. Like big time. Big facts. Let's yeah. start with money. Okay. When I say money and I say mastering the energy of money, mm. what comes up? Well, to me, energy is currency, mm -hmm. right? Money is currency. Currency flows. So where am I blocking the flow of that? Right. I, I, my friends all know this. They're like, you have the craziest abundance mindset ever. I do. Cause I just truly believe that it's all here. Like it's just all here for all of us, not just for me. No, no, for everybody. for everybody. It's for everybody. And most people, my joke is like, most people are holding up a pen and they're like, all right, this is my receiver tube. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to receive. Yeah. Right? right. And for me, I'm like, there's no limit. No. Like I don't even have a bucket. Right. I, I'm just like, yes. I'm yeah. fully like, yes, yes. rain on me. That's right. I, I'm not in resistance to money. That's right. So for me, money is just energy and I'm a yes to my energy. I'm constantly, again, checking in. How's my energy feeling? Circling back all the way to the beginning of our conversation. We are, have to be responsible for our own energy. That energy is a frequency. Mm. That frequency attracts or it repels. repels. Exactly. So most people aren't even aware of the frequency that they're omitting. Right. And they're going, why am I not making money? That's well, right. let's look at your energy. Right. Right. And your belief system. So when you're blaming Trump Ooh. or you're blaming Biden yeah. or you're blaming the economy or you're blaming or you're even paying attention to any of it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. You're not going to get my. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with your money. Absolutely. Right. And that's the thing is if you and it's not just like a belief, right? It's it's a knowing. A lot of people say, okay, I'm going to do affirmations. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. It's like, yeah, do it. I was going to say that because when you use the word beliefs, it was like, even, you know, your energy in it, I, I was going to say, but it's not a belief. It's, it's a knowing. knowing is and, what it and is. And that's it. Your energy has to be so certain. Like, I know my name. I'm so certain of my name that there's, you can't convince me otherwise. That's how I feel about money. I'm so certain that there's an abundance, an infinite supply. How do I know nature? Look at a strawberry. I literally was looking at a strawberry the other day. I was sitting with Preston. I was like, look at this strawberry. It's all these seeds. This isn't just one strawberry. It's not even two strawberries. It's an infinite amount of strawberries because one seed on a strawberry, all those seeds, mm -hmm. could plant a whole orchard of strawberries, right. which compounds, compounds, compounds. It's endless. Absolutely. Nature is that. We are nature. Why would I think I'm anything different it's than that? That's simple. Yeah, that's it. That's simple. That's it. You either that's choose to way. know it or not. That's it. Beautiful. That's it. I love that. The second one is uh, food. Food. So I have an interesting relationship with food because, again, it's energy, right? So I have a sweet tooth and I like certain things and I don't deprive myself of anything. Good for you. Right? So yeah. I believe the energy that I meet my food with is how it'll enter my body. So I don't eat my food with like <gasps> guilt. I'm going to eat this thing. And what does that mean? And how many calories? Blah, blah, blah. It's this is energy. I'm energy. Yes. Thank you. And that's it. It's in. So I eat what I want to eat, but it's so funny. People say, oh, well, then do you just eat like crap? No, because I get that food is energy. I have a different relationship <laughs> to it, you know? So it's like certain food is higher vibration because it's alive versus other food. It's not. So so give us an example because so some people like, don't know. A, fresh organic vegetables picked from your garden, right? Made a salad or roasted or whatever. It's alive, right? There's actual enzymes in there that enter your body and help break down the food and do all sorts of amazing things versus an Oreo. I happen to love Oreos, right? right? right. Oreo is a dead food. There's nothing alive about an Oreo. It could sit on the shelf for God knows how long. Yeah. It is not alive, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it tastes good. Yeah. It's childhood favorite, right? Yeah. So I'll eat my salad. I'll say, yes, thank you. Oh my gosh, so grateful for this food. Energy enters, perfect. I eat with the same energy that one Oreo I'm gonna have without even thinking about it. But I also know that that carries its own frequency, just like you carry your own frequency. I'm not responsible for your frequency, right. but I'm responsible for my frequency of how I receive it. Sure. So the Oreo's frequency, let's say is zero, right? Because it's a dead food. The salad is a 10 or a hundred, right? I'm not responsible for that energy, but I'm responsible for how I receive it. So they both get received as a 10. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm going to take that one. Yeah. It's I'm different. Take I know one. not everyone, everyone's like, you know, I'm regimented and I eat that. I'm like, cool yeah. to each their own. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. You know, food for me, I, I love to eat. I grew up in a, you know, we owned restaurants. Like I love food. So food is a pleasure point for me. So I do not deprive myself of that. You know what else? You know what else I found? The more that you're in love, the more that you love food. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like whenever Jen is around, I'm just like, the abs go away. 
Yeah. I get my love handles. That's and right. And I'm okay with it. It's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. But mm. there, there is a happy medium, right? Like I, I find that when I'm in that frequency and energy towards my food, like I love my body. Why? Because it's an energy, right? So it's just like my body's, no matter what it looks like. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yes. I just, yes. My body's awesome. Like, thank you, body. You're incredible. Absolutely. You know? I love that. Yeah. And the last one is sex. Oh, that's one I'm like diving deep into right now. Mm -hmm. So when you said that, I'm like, yes. Because that is, there's A, so much programming mm -hmm. in society around like what sex is and isn't and how you should be or shouldn't be. What's a good boy or a good girl and what's a bad one? And, you know, there's just so much stigma around it. Um, I think it's designed that way, by the way. The Matrix yeah. designed it that way because if you think it's the thing that created you. Right. So if they can control the thing that created you. Oh, yeah. They control you. Oh, I never thought of it that way. That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. And, and you know, Preston and I, again, in this 2.0 of our relationship, like this is a big thing that we're looking at. It's like, how do we, like, what do we want our sex life to look like? And yeah. we're just having more fun with it and being explorative and curious. And for both of us, that's kind of radical because we grew up in households where it was like. Very tr traditional. You don't right. talk about that. Right. You know, right. he grew up yeah. religiously. I didn't, but it was like. Good Greek girls don't talk about sex. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, yeah. get married and that's it. We don't talk about it. You had all these babies. We don't know yeah. how. It's fine. Right. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so it's interesting because that's something that we're exploring. But again, I'm responsible for my experience. So I'm diving deeply into sensuality classes, uh, movement, uh, playing with the energy of the muse and pleasure. And like, what does that look like? Some days it's painting. Some days it's... Um, pole dancing class sometimes some days it's like a conversation with my girlfriend where we're creating and ideating so i am responsible for my connection with eros right like the energy mm -hmm. of the the creative divine energy and it's not always physical sex right like you're having sex with life or you're not mm -hmm. and we meet people that are like so turned on to life you're like wow that <laughs> like right. you are magnetic like what is that person doing i want some of that right and then there's people who are just like yeah. turned off yeah. and that truthfully is like what i'm playing with is like how do i bring the spirit of turn on the spirit of like life is sex like everything nature the weather even if it's raining and not perfect like that like how can i be in the pleasure of receiving life's magic mm -hmm. right because that's the dance sex is a giving and receiving That's dance. Right. And most of us can't even be in that dance in real life. So if we can't do it outside of the bedroom, like we're probably not going to be well-practiced for inside the bedroom. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you know, know it's, it's so interesting, but I, I'm seeing more and more that the, the way that your body shows up, both masculine and feminine in the bedroom, is a definite representation of the way you are showing up outside of it. Yes. You know, and so many of us store trauma uh, you yes. know sexual trauma like literally in our body parts. Oh, yeah. our body parts will not fully operate the way they're intended to yeah they won't fully it's open or closed it's open or closed yeah. yeah yeah and it's, it's either you have to like force it that's or right. it just kind of flows and happens that's you right. know um I, I i just i have to ask you this i i feel comfortable enough with asking you this but have you ever heard of yoni eggs yeah of course when i practice them because yes. because for our female users yes Ladies, yes, two words, Yoni. <laughs> yes, there are people. It's so funny because I never heard of it until probably about six years ago. Then I got one, started the practice, and then I got pregnant. So you're not supposed to do it when you're pregnant, you still can. But you know, I was like super cautious with my first, but it's incredible because it's developing a muscle. That's that's right. And it's like, okay, you want to be more capable during sex like that's a muscle it's a game changer oh my gosh and then post-birth for any mamas out there who have given birth like your body held a lot and that muscle begins to atrophy and weakens if we aren't rehabilitating it so there's a whole rehabilitation process that the yoni egg is incredible for yeah um also mamas anyone who has um diastasis where your abs separate during pregnancy so many women have that and they don't know they have that mm -hmm. that is your core that is your foundation get to work on rebuilding that there are specialists in every area that for me has been a game changer just to feel my center point in my body mm. it's huge and i've you know i had a twin pregnancy and then i had you know two singles but three big pregnancies yeah. it can be a lot, a lot on the body and so it is it is a part of our mothership and our motherhood to actually rehabilitate the body that birthed these babies because if we want to be there for our kids 
I mean, we get to be in our strength, we get to be in our power, and we get to actually have, it's, we'll never get a body back, I hate that, because you're initiated into a whole new body. Mm. But it is your job to build that body in a way that makes you feel so powerful and come back into communion with it in a powerful way. Because birth can be traumatic for a lot of women. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And how have you done that? So I'm doing, I'm doing a ton of rehabs, literally on just, because I had a four finger separation. So I'm oh, wow. literally like building it back with these like subtle, it's like painstaking exercises, but it's subtle. And for me, it's been this reminder of like, this is me taking my power back. This is me feeling great in my body. This is me being able to take care of my kids for decades to come. Yoni eggs, practices like that. Um, strength training is huge, especially for women because women's muscle tends to just decline over time. So strength training and then just simple practices of breath is really huge because when we breathe, most of us don't know how to breathe and we're breathing right in chat. Here. And so when we breathe, we want to like picture it almost like a corset, like zipping up and you're pressing your belly button into your spine like that and zipping your body up. And that that practice alone will help to mend your body back together yeah. and get you connected to your core, which this is our our intelligence center. Yeah. Most people think it's here. But this is actually the gut informs the brain. Yeah. So if we're not solid here, then we're just on autopilot here. Absolutely. And so it's really important from a somatic practice to be grounded in our center point. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Final message in particular for all the mom entrepreneur wives out there listening. Be gentle. <laughs> be gentle. I think society is so hard on us already. Um, again, like we've got to start nurturing ourselves. We're waiting for the world to treat us fairly and see our invisible workload and all the things and it may never happen. So the question is, how are you going to take care of you right now? And how do you do it with love and compassion and kindness so that your children, especially if we're talking about mamas, your children see what it's like to be a woman in her power, completely sovereign and not outsourcing herself so that they can attract a partner like you or be a partner like you mm -hmm. in their future. Because as you know, our kids model. Absolutely. You know, they look at it and then you could be saying one thing, but they're looking at what you're doing and that's who they're going to become. Yeah. And so that's the thing that keeps me on track when I feel like being lazy. I'm like, nope. My daughter's looking at me like, what does a sovereign woman in her power look like? And my sons are looking at me like, oh, this is the type of woman that I want in my life. And so I get to, to help my children, even if it's just a little bit, by being a model and an example for them. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. This was awesome. So good. Yes. So See, good. we didn't need an outline. No, no, no. <laughs> outline, schmoutline. Right. Don't need that. Absolutely. The feminine in practice. Absolutely. Letting it go. Just let, let it, it flow. flow. Absolutely. Yeah. How do people get a hold of you, get in touch with you? Yeah, on Instagram, at Alexi Panos. I've got YouTube videos. I've got a podcast, top 10 podcast called Unleashed with Alexi Panos. Beautiful. Uh, Preston and I are bringing back The Bridge, which is our somatic embodiment training. Uh, it's been a couple years since COVID, but we're coming back to Australia and here in Austin. So bridgeexperience.com for that. Okay. It will blow your mind and it is like nothing out there because we do deep somatic work, deep trauma work, and it's all about unleashing the truest expression of who you are. I love it. And you know what? I, I will say even before I met you guys, I had heard about that. Oh, it's in chat. I hear it's <laughs> I hear it's I hear it's legit. It's legit. I mean, we have we have people in the industry who train and teach take it. We've had some of Tony Robbins' top coaches take it and they're like, holy shit. Beautiful. Yeah. We well, because we're not afraid, we push the envelope. That's right. So that we do nudity work. We do I've all heard, sorts of stuff. I've heard. All sorts I've heard, of stuff. Yeah. But really it's for freedom. Yeah. And it's it's really, we believe that when you're free, you are free from your automatic responses in the world. And that's true sovereignty. That's true freedom. It doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from, you know, lifestyle or whatever we think it does. It's when you are sovereign in your choices as a human being and you can enter any space in the world and feel like yourself. I love that. So beautiful. We're going to end it right there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank, you, so thank you. Yeah. And that's it. This week's episode for The Higher Self. I feel called to tell you, especially for those of you ladies, like you, you, I want you to listen to this two and three times because you're going to get so many little things uh, that Alexi shared that I don't think many women have the capacity to share. You're in a really special place. Mm -hmm. And I want to commend you for that, for Thank that work. You. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's it. We'll see you next week on The Higher Self.
Thanks for watching or listening. If this week's episode resonated with you deeply and you're ready to discover more about yourself, go to dannymorell.com and check out some of our upcoming events and our resources. Or if you'd like to learn more about our coaching programs, simply shoot us a message on Instagram and one of our team members will reach out to you immediately.